pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Um, has the council had time to review the agenda? I make a proposal that we approve the agenda as set forth. I'll second that. There is a motion and a second to approve the agenda. All those in favor, please show voting sign. Opposed, same sign. Motion passes. Um, now is the time for public comments. Persons who wish to address the city council regarding items on the agenda may do so as that agenda item is called. Persons who wish to address the city council regarding items not on the agenda that are under the jurisdiction of the city may do so when called upon by the mayor. Comments on personnel matters, matters pending in the courts, or with other outside tribunals are not submitted. Speakers are limited to three minutes. Any presentation is for information purposes only. No action will be taken. Are there any public comments? I don't need a mic. I just want to thank the city for our good streets. I've been in Wichita all week through uh, all the Eureka Yates Center. There's more potholes, and then I did a tour, sorry if you're from Humboldt, through Humboldt, and there's a jillion potholes. And we don't have them. And thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Anyone else wishing to address the council? <laughs> Seeing none, uh, has the council had time to review the consent agenda? Can I make a motion we approve the consent agenda? Miss Ivan, real quick. Uh, um, the Allen County Relay for Life event, that may be changing, so they may not need all the assistance that they requested that we thought we would just leave it on for ease and that way if we need to we can help the consent. Well, it was announced on the radio today that they were moving it out here. But I think they might. There might still be some assistance that they want us to do that would fall within what they requested. So. Um, we have a motion and a second to approve the consent agenda. All those in favor, please show a voting sign. Who opposed? Second. A mark. mark. Motion passes. Um, to the right section here. CITF Pride Excellence Recognition. Okay, well. Um, I need the pride group to come up here with me. You are. <laughs> Why don't you guys, somebody here, hold on to this while I just need a little something. <laughs> I'd be a torn between the roses anyway. <laughs> The Kansas Pride Program is a partnership of the Kansas Department of Commerce, K-State Research and Extension, and Kansas Pride e Inc., along with the Kansas Masons. Kansas Pride is dedicated to serving communities across the state to encourage and assist local government and volunteers in making their community a better place to live and work. Through the Kansas Pride Program, local communities identify what they would like to preserve, create, or improve for their future. Then working with the resources of the Kansas Department of Commerce and K-State Research and Extension, community volunteers pull together to create their ideal community future. Iowa CITF Pride has done all of these and goes above and beyond to help assist with community development projects that make Iowa a better place to live and work. Because of that, I would like to present this sign as a reminder of Iowa CITF Pride's third three-year award as a Kansas Pride Community of Excellence. Congratulations. Thank you all for everything. Thank you for all your work. <laughs> Item A, a used generation. Mr. Mayor, members of council, um, Iola has a current capacity requirement of roughly 28 megawatts. Uh, with the available generation, the city of Iola Electric Utilities um, generation capacity is approximately 22.5 megawatts. And the city covers the capacity shortfall by purchasing capacity from our Southwind Energy Group uh, partners, Shinnu and Sabetha. And that 
capacity costs is uh, roughly $100,000 per year. Um, over the years, um, in con consultation with the city staff and our energy consultant, and council has expressed um, a desire to add generation capacity um, to cover the city's full load, and the electric utility has actually been saving money for a number of years to purchase extra capacity. Um, city staff have been working with David Schaefer from High Plains Power Systems, LLC, on a proposed project to purchase and install some used generators. And the proposals include the purchase and installation of two, two megawatt units and the necessary switchgear and other equipment. Um, this equipment would be installed at our power plant number two at Bassett. Um, this project would also kind of prep for the, additional of a, uh, the addition of a third unit, um, which we, we, were, we would have liked to purchase at this time, but um, there was only two available, so that's, it'll, but it'll have all the, the switch gear and everything will be sized for uh, the third unit. Um, the purchase of used generators and associated equipment totals $800,000. The installation project um, totals $311,250. Um, together that is $1,111,250, um, which is basically $277,000 per megawatt. Um, the electric utility has been saving this, saving money, um, and we have $2.35 million allocated in the electric CIP budget for additional generation. Um, city staff has been working with Mr. Schaefer and City Attorney Bob Johnson on this agreement language, and it's not quite finalized, but we'd like to uh, request approval of the agreements pending City Attorney review and approval of the final agreement. I thought we were looking at three units before. That's what I said. We, we had three units. Um, I, my understanding, the project that we were getting these from, there was four units available. We were looking at three. Um, High Plains has ended up and sold two of them, and so there are two left for us to, to use. Can we uh, do something where we can, uh, I mean, we, we need to do this. That's a given. Can we do it on a contingency of uh, buy the two now with the approval of doing a third at the same cost without going over? I think I would be hesitant to do that. I think, I mean, it would be easy enough for us to bring that back because we'll have these, this agreement will be, the agreement for the third unit would be similar and near what we already have. That's part of kind of working through all this is getting the agreement finalized. I guess I just didn't want to miss out on what one came available like, like we did here. Uh, I mean, we were, we were, the city was ready to do this. It's taken a long time to get uh, High Plains understanding that we have certain requirements for our, our contractual agreements that we, that we make. And those are set forth by our city attorney um, and, and his guidance. So, um, in the future, I, I would hope we'd have all this language worked out in the next couple of weeks so when we were, get a third unit available, we can make pull that trigger pretty fast. But we still want to probably bring that before council. Um, have you talked to the powerhouse guys? Are they familiar enough with these units to run them, or are they going to have to be trained on them? Um, the, the guys at the power plant, Mike has been intricately involved with this and, and Chuck Hepburn out there. Um, they talked back and forth with uh, David Schaefer and I think there might be some differences between our EMD diesel generation and our Caterpillar generation, but that's, they've got that kind of figured out what they need to do to, to be able to run those things. Uh, Remember, Eugene, as well, these aren't going to see a whole lot of use. The diesels are pretty expensive. They go to our capacity. Um, that capacity ends up lowering our purchase prices. Um, these are in line, basically, in case we, we see some really bad natural disaster. Um, but they're very, very expensive to run per megawatt. Um, right. And so we only run them, run them just enough to test them and say, yep, they run, they, run, they work, they can count towards our capacity and save us the $100,000 a year, um, which, you know, not 10, 12 years, that'll, that'll pay for itself and then save money in the future going forward. And right, I, I understand that, but I just want to make sure that if we had to run out there and start them up tomorrow morning that the guys knew how to properly run them yeah. and put them online 
to keep power in the city. They, they will be trained on the operation of these units. Okay. Um, the one thing, we, we have not had an engineer inspect these, but we they have been load tested, um, and we've seen all the performance data, so and they, they're um, performed as specs, so we're, uh, Mike is comfortable with the units as presented. So. Okay. On page 9, it says B, it says we need to, there's a service that be provided, like, you know, getting everything ready, what's the cost going to be on that? On um, page nine of um, the draft, which one? Exhibit B. Yeah. Service is not to be provided by the seller. Okay. Well, there's two exhibit. There, that information is. Um, most of that will be just done in house. Uh, Mike and Jim have kind of worked out. I don't know. We don't have a dollar amount on that. Um, but as, as far as the those items have also been reviewed and, and, and uh, <coughs> in agreements with from uh, Mike and Jim with the electric department. Well, they're going to be using the same building and stuff, so most of that stuff should already be there. Well, the fuel lines for the old units will have to be exposed, um, and I think the um, they feel like we can reuse the. the the uh, grounding grid that was there for those old units. So all this is just kind of not a little more than dusting off the old building, but it's a lot of that's there. But they'll run new wires from the generators to the switch gear and all that kind of stuff. Too. I'll make a motion um, to approve the purchase agreement with High Plains Power Systems LLC. To two MW used Caterpillar generators and associated equipment for eight hundred thousand dollars and authorize the necessary signatures. Can that be pending city attorney approval? Or pending city, city attorney approval. I'd second that motion. <laughs> there is a motion in the second uh, to purchase two two megawatt Caterpillar generators from High Plains, pending um, city attorney approval. All of those in favor, please show voting sign. Opposed. Motion passes. Around you. I'll make a motion to approve the equipment, insula <coughs> equipment installation agreement with High Plains Power Systems LLC to install to install the two two MW used Caterpillar generators and associated equipment for three hundred eleven thousand two hundred fifty dollars and authorize necessary signatures to the city attorney. I'll second that. There is a motion and a second to authorize the installation of two two megawatt Caterpillar generators from High Plains Power pending attorney approval. All those in favor, please show a voting sign. Opposed, same sign. Motion passes. Item B. Mr. Mayor. Yeah. Excuse me. I'd like to make a motion to suspend the rules and move item E next uh, to get, uh, I think that's going to be a pretty quick action item. And instead of keeping them out here for this, uh, there is a motion in the second to move item E up. Uh, it has been seconded to suspend the rules. It will be a two thirds majority. All those in favor, please show a voting sign. Set up, opposed, motion passes. So we're going to jump down to item E, which is a special use permit on 401 South Walnut. <laughs> Good eye there. I didn't get it earlier yet. Thank you. Evening. Uh, on May 15th, Planning Commission held a uh, public hearing on an application by uh, Megan Carnan and Taylor Weston uh, <coughs> requesting a special use permit for a commercial daycare at 401 South Walnut. Uh, currently, Harvest Baptist Church was there. They're moving. Uh, the church that was there previously had a daycare and preschool at it, uh, but it was a church. According to the code uh, table, use table 16509, uh, in an R3 zone, which is an R3 zone, a commercial daycare is allowed, but it has to have a special use permit. Uh, we had a hearing. Uh, nobody from the neighborhood called or came to the, the hearing. Uh, was discussed. The uh, Planning Commission voted unanimously uh, the members that were there to pass it, so I'm here before the 
council asking the council to pass their special use permit request. Well, I would make the motion to approve the special use permit for the property at 401 South Walnut to allow a commercial daycare. There is a motion and a second uh, to approve the permit at 401 South Walnut. All those in favor, please show voting sign. Opposed, same sign. Motion passes. That was a good call there. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, item B, <clears throat> back to regular order, solar. Sid. Scott. Mr. Mayor, members of council, um, in August of 2018, the city of Iowa entered into an MOU with Westar to study the feasibility of a potential um, solar project. The initial project proposals were reviewed um, in October of 2018, and over the last several months, Westar has continued to kind of refine that um, proposal um, for the fixed solar system. And the proposal includes 48 megawatt per hour per power purchase agreement and includes the ability to buy out the project in year eight. Considering the initial PPA for seven years, the buyout price and the 30 year kind of project life, the overall average cost of the project is roughly um, $29.51 per megawatt hour. Um, the solar product becomes helpful during our times of peak demand, uh, especially during the summer months. The city's demand um, peaks during the hottest part of the day, which corresponds with the peak demands across the, the grid. Um, this peak demand serves to drive up market prices, and, and Iowa is currently exposed about 55% to the, to the SPP market, and it means that then we are exposed to those higher prices uh, when we're needing to buy more energy. Um, solar serves to diminish this product, or this impact, um, since it's going to produce more when it's during the heat of the day, that means it's going to, we won't have to buy as much off the market um, during our peak demand because we're going to have some solar production. Um, that's roughly about a 25% reduction to our, our market exposure during the peak <coughs> demand times. Um, that was kind of illustrated in the, I think it was graphs two and three um, that showed uh, the, the Kind of energy 24 hour load profile. We're going to uh, reference the packet. And ultimately, the city of, we're going to buy, purchase energy from some source. Um, this potential solar product offers a long term fixed price um, and is competitive in today's market and probably very likely highly competitive in, in the future pricing. Um, Although the solar product would be a relatively small component of the city's energy profile, it works to limit the exposure to the market, especially during times of peak demand and higher prices. And we have EMG's Scott Shreve here, and um, Brain, uh, not Brain, and Brain's not here. Scott Davidson with Westar is here to, to visit with us about that project. Scott, Scott, um, appreciate, first of all, appreciate you guys passing that capacity. Uh, we've been talking about that for quite a while. And it's, it's a really good move, and I really like the mixture of, as you are talking about, Mayor, is that uh, we've got the capacity now, and we're going to get some capacity out of this solar, but we're going to get, we don't need to run the diesel generators, we're going to get in this cheaper energy off the solar plant, and so, um, I, again, I'd be glad to answer any questions. I know you've been bombarded with a lot of information. I'll try to keep the acronyms down to a minimum. Uh, but we do have Scott Davidson here with the Westar, with, and, and I would like for it, him to at least Tell you a little bit more that it's just not a PPA, which is a power purchase agreement. It's really more the involvement they uh, they just did a one megawatt with the city of Baldwin, and just the involvement they're doing with the community college and some of the other stuff. So, just if you don't mind taking a few minutes and <coughs> just want to thank the council for having me here, um, Scott Davidson. Um, yeah, we uh, just entered into an agreement with uh, Baldwin City. Um, we're uh, just uh, excited about that partnership. We're excited about the opportunity to partner with the city of Iola. Um, just a few things we've done was, you know, we organized a uh, groundbreaking ceremony for the city, had some other executives come and speak to the attendees. Um, we have partnered with Baker University um, to have their business students and their science students uh, take part in the project. The business students understand the, the business need and why it makes sense for the city. 
Um, we've invited, given the uh, science students access to our <clears throat> environmental group so that they could understand you know, items such as uh, reseeding, um, storm <clears throat> water control, um, other items like that, and also allow them to provide input on the project. Um, so all of those things we would love to do with City of Iola. And uh, you know, if you have any questions for me, I'd, I'd be happy to try to answer them. But it's my understanding from Scott that uh, the city is pretty well versed in the uh, actual economics of this project. I have a question on Baldwin City. That was what, a one megawatt? Yes, sir. Farm, and it was set up for 20 years at a fixed rate. That's right. Yeah. A, is it right? It's not a buyout like it, I actually believe it may be. It's a 30, 30, year, 30 year. It's a 30 year. They have a buyout as well. They have yeah, a different. After 20? Yeah. yeah. After, seven, after seven, it's the same same principles, same outs, if you will. Yeah. I'm just looking at it. It up. It's a 20 year. The buyout's eight years, but the option is there to buy out any time after that. You get your best price in eight years. You know, from from my research, it looks like one way or the other, um, the big producers are not. They're not. They're telling everyone right now that they're not going to renew their coal plants and that they're building these renewable sources. Um, here's one from NPR: Idaho Utilities Furnace Coal pledges 100% clean energy by 2045. Um, and a similar one out of PSO, which is Public Service Company of Oklahoma. Um, that came out on May 8th that they are basically not going to renew, they're going to up their renewables and their gas and not renew coal as well. And so from my perspective, it looks like we're going to have to buy this product either on the market or we can generate this product ourselves. And it just seems like it makes fiscal sense because if we generate it ourselves, there's no transmission fee. All right, once, once we buy it off West, are you uh, correct? That, that's, yeah, that's there's no transmission fee involved in that. That's correct. It's only just within the city system. Okay. I got a question, and it's probably, I mean, I'm not trying to be humorous or anything, but in case of natural disaster like flooding or tornadoes, if they gets wiped out, is that on us to replace it before the buyout, or is that on you guys to replace it. So if the solar facility is wiped out, let's say a tornado hits it prior to the buyout, that would be on us. Okay, what about how safe are they from flooding? If flooding should happen, flood out an area that has these panels, are they, I mean, are they still going to be functional after a flood? I'm not an expert on that. I would assume the panels would be okay. The inverters, I think, could be at risk. Of well, they're, I mean, it's very, I mean, it's, so it's a it's a safe system. I mean, whether yeah. it's snow or ice or, you know, whatever, uh, yeah. rain, water, it's still going to be a safe system. It'll still produce power from that system. Okay, so there won't be any chance of it shorting out or, no. No. or anything like that? No. Okay, that's just, I mean, yeah. I know we got flooding going on around there right oh, now, but that's just a Absolutely. question that come to my mind on that. And remember, Eugene, in these numbers are the price for insurance for the, if, if we purchase it at year eight, right. our numbers include the price for insurance. So if that tornado comes right. in year nine after we buy it, we got it insured and could rebuild it ourselves. Okay. Right. How are we going to pay for this? <laughs> You've got some numbers on this. Well, at, right now, so we did, we just approved the purchase of the two generators. Um, if we, estimating at the same kind of cost um, for a third unit to in, and get that installed, um, and you take what we have saved, we have $2.3 million saved for additional generation, and you take the, the, the cost of the generators we bought, potential third unit, we'd have $700,000 left over of what we already have saved. Um, when we switch to Westar to become our market participant um, for the SEG group, um, we no longer needed the line of credit that we had with um, SDP um, when Chanute was doing our market participation. And so that credit was about a million dollars. So between those two, we have $1.7 or $1.7 million um, that, is, that we can put towards um, this project. 
realize that buyout is in year eight. So we're talking seven years to save uh, money. My understanding from visiting with Westar that this is actually a 2021 project. So now we're talking really nine years to save um, towards this uh, buyout. And ultimately, um, you know, I think we saved $2.3 million for additional generation. I think we just kind of keep up our same um, sort of philosophy and put, I think if I made a packet, I think it was a little over 281. Wouldn't it be a little bit less because we're not factoring in the cost of capacity payments anymore? So over the next nine years, we won't be paying the $100,000 in capacity, which is about 900,000 there, correct? Well, yeah, because we, since we bought this generation, we're going to have we're going to save on capacity, so we're going to some of that money can actually go towards that savings. Um, I, I think I mean, so right we right now I think we can save that million. amount of money. So, <clears throat> roughly, we would have to save about one hundred ninety thousand dollars a year because we're <clears throat> the ninety thousand coming off of capacity. Okay, right. We well, can't even make the payments on our water plant. Those are two different funds. It doesn't matter. No, we've they, talked about this, I mean, seriously, for almost a year about these coming from two different funds. I think we've had this on the table long enough. We all know where we stand. Fine, we're still and I would about it. I think it's a moot point. It is. And so, here's the thing. We, I, I have an article on some research that I did. 17 Midwest companies that trade in public energy, okay? All but four of these are going to renewable energy, okay? At some point, we are going to be paying for this. We're either going to do it ourselves or we're going to be paying for it from some other energy company, okay? The transmission fees. Um, basically, what is going on here? The coal's gone. We either do this, we jump on board now, do it ourselves, or we are missing the boat. And this isn't for us. This is for our kids, grandkids, I just think there's been enough information on the table here for all of us. We can sit here and say it's too expensive, this, that, or the other. This is an investment for us, for our town, for your kids. It's always a risk, there's always cons, but there's more pros here. What these numbers don't factor in as well is that you're buying this energy one way or the other. Like you have to buy this energy, we need this energy. The question is, is it going to cost us on average $29 a megawatt in 30 years? And I'm, a, and I'm not going to gamble or try to hedge the markets, but I'm going to guess right now that we're averaging 28, 28 and a half, that in 30 years inflation alone is going to make that a very reasonable number, period. And at some point, will we miss out on tax breaks if we decide to do this in the future? You look at the windmill farms right now, they used to be lifetime. No tax, correct? Now it's only 10 years on the ones they just put out here. I'm just saying, now's the time. What are we buying power at right now? On average, it's, if you go back to that, if you look at graph, uh, one, page figure, three. Figure one, it's that last year, when you look at what we bought and what we spent on power, it's 28.94. Year before it was 27-ish. Year before 37, the year before that 38. So we're down. It just depends on the national markets. Natural gas. That's a great question. It's a fair question. Natural gas is, is down. Who, who knows how long it will stay down? And it's kind of deceiving because we're blending it all together. You know, it's kind of like I bought some gas at two dollars and fifteen cents, and I bought some gas at four dollars and fifty-five cents, and it averaged to be two two twenty-five. Right? I'm, I'm buying most of it at, at very cheap prices. Get, if the more my base load, I'm, be, I'm able to buy a cheaper product across that peak, across the whole 24 uh, 7, if you will. Those peak hours, we're by, I, mean, I just uh, sent a note today for tomorrow prices across the peak. Now, whether it's sunny or tomorrow or not, but it's about $41, $42 is what we bought, that, that, that exposure that he's talking about. We're, we're going to pay a, a premium, if you will, for another 5 or $6, right? But we're also getting that capacity. We're getting about 2.7 megawatts of capacity that you just paid, uh, you know, a million and a half dollars for. So it, it, it's kind of hard. I'm not trying to juggle those, but uh, to give you a fair answer, we're we're buying a 24, 25 dollar product from Westar for for about seven, eight megawatts every hour. And so when we blend, when we say we bought it for 28 or 29, we bought a lot at 35 or 40 or 45, 
and that average is 40, is 28 or 32 or 33. So does that make sense? So knowing how this city has gone over the last 10 years, we were supposed to save after the last flood, and we've saved $2.4 million, is that right? 2.35. 2.35. So how are we going to continue to save to make these payments when we haven't been able to do it in the past? But I think we've clearly shown that we can save over the last 10 years for this generation capacity. That's what we've done. So we're going to have our the entire pro account the problem, on this one project. The problem that we get with the water plant is that the water plant to pay for it expected new use and new users. This does not expect new use or new users. It's the current users. And even if we lower, let's pretend something happens to Gates or Russell Stovers, we still need this energy product to meet our current demands. Even if they're not there, that's not going to affect the load that we have, right? It's going to affect some of our base loads, but this product is still going to be usable if we can plug still into our system. If so if we do, if we did go through with this and we don't have the money and we have to bond it, how much does that cost us town? Well, that's a great question. I've done, it's, I'm, I did 20, 20 years at 3.5%. And his number, if you pay cash, right, is it's about $29. My number, if you, if you finance the whole thing, it's about $35. So it's about a six or seven dollar premium for and the that, finance, and that's financing all the whole thing. Seven, the whole thing, which we have one. You've got half of it today, so let's make it thirty-three dollars. And, and the point is, that average, I'd be willing. To, I mean, we're buying power again for twenty-four, twenty-five dollars base load. Again, coal's going away, natural gas, with a lot of winds coming. Um, I like the mix of it personally, and it's a good. We know our fixed. It's a it's a fixed price. And again, you don't have to buy it out. If you don't want to buy it, you don't have to. But you save about two or three. You save about two and a half million dollars from the forty-eight dollar number down to the twenty-nine, or actually more, about three, about three and a half million dollars, three point eight million dollars. So again, you don't have to do. You don't have to buy it out. It what, just the premium is there. The what I sense. like about this as well is it diversifies our renewable portfolio. We're already talking about hydro coming up. Um, we have already have some right. wind in our portfolio, and this is one that now we have a nice diverse portfolio in there that we have wind, solar, and um, hydro, or at least the option for them, and that puts us in a pretty solid boat for 30 years. Right? The way these things are going with renewable energy. We've got ourselves 30 years locked on this product. We've got this 30 years locked on on the way that energy is going at about 25% of our usage. Just bottom line, what does this do to the end user? I mean, this past winter, utility bills have been outrageous, and I'm sure everybody can agree with me on that. I have a total electric home, and they it's just been outrageous. What does this do to the end user? Is this going to raise what people are currently paying right now until it gets to that point where we're not paying for it or we bought it out? What is it doing to well, them? To answer, I mean, there's just a lot about weather related that you use a lot more energy. We all use a lot more energy. The city bought a whole lot more energy this winter than last. So your prices were actually lower, but your bill was higher because you bought more units, if you will, more kilowatt hours. You're more energy to, to heat the home and those kind of things. So, uh, but it's, it's a straight pass through. The, the ECA, the energy cost adjustment, here's my cost of dollar, here's my cost of power divided by the kilowatt hours, and it's a straight pass through that the city makes every every month. We make a calculation of that. Um, it's hard to say. I think in the summer, I wouldn't see a much of a premium. In the winter, I might see a small premium. Uh, but again, but isn't the cost of this higher? It, it is yeah. higher, okay. absolutely. That's, no, I'm, that's where I was. It's higher. Okay. It's, it's okay. a premium today, but again, looking at it 30 years now, it's going to be a lot cheaper in year 8 to 22 to year 30. 30. Yes, we hope. No, it, 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 it will be. Absolutely, it will be. Once, once we own the system, it, it's this, a is financing mechanism. Mechanism. this is a financing mechanism. It's whether you want to buy your car and do it over five years or over 20 years. And this is the mechanism. The relationship we did, we went out, uh, again, kind of back history is Chanute, Iola, and all those. Uh, why did we want to go find a, a solar developer that would work with us, and we basically cut everybody out. And, and Westar is basically buying the panels, inverters, and the racking at cost and passing those on. They're taking advantage, they're making a profit. There's a tax, uh, absolutely, to make a profit. Um, but there's also, uh, but they're taking advantage of the tax credits and everything else, and they're passing that on. And then this buyout, no one else, when we worked with all those folks, were willing to give us, buy it for 70 cents on the dollar, if you will, versus 
dollar fifty a, a premium to buy out the product in in year eight. So um, correct me if I'm wrong, but Chanute's discussing Chanute's, this coming yes, up. Yes, yeah, yeah, absolutely. They're having the discussion tonight, and they're, they're basically their biggest customer. One of the biggest customers wants kind of back to. They want to be green. They want to be. They want to have sustainability. So they want that green. And again, I'm not saying that we know Russell Sobers has had some interest in the past. Maybe Gates has. Uh, so there's again all sorts of ways to structure this. We just need to know whether you want to do this or not. Yeah. To me, it makes sense. But again, that's the decision you got to make. Sid, refresh my memory. At the last time we talked about this, there was something about seven hundred fifty thousand dollars a year. That we was going to start saving. What was that referred to? I'm not sure. Uh, was that was that I think that saving was on the pact and to stay in with Sabetha, Chanute, or what was that? that might it, well, I might have, have I might have think because that might have been before we got the actual. Our line of credit refunded, and we were thinking it was going to be about 750. Now, that might have been what that right. was, but that was that's a one-time refund. That that's not. A... Okay, how much are we are we going to save not being in that pack a year with them? You're saving about a hundred thousand dollars on capacity. Right. Okay. So by year nine, there's another hundred thousand, or there's another basically million, which gets you the 2.7 million. Okay. Which means in nine years, then you're looking at a hundred, hundred and fifty thousand dollars of savings, which we've been steadfastly doing in that fund for the last eight years. Yeah. I remember a lot of this started back in 07 when that council made a choice not to rebuild steam capacity, and instead they rebuilt the pool and they rebuilt the park with that funds. And had they rebuilt the capacity, we would have saved enough money to rebuild the parks in the capacity payments that we paid other people. Right, and so we're looking at doing something similar for our own citizens for 30 years. Build the capacity, generate your own energy, and you'll see the savings. You're going to pay the premium up front, but by year eight, you're going to start making money yourselves. Could I ask a question, please? Go ahead. Is this going to be located uh, west of the Russell Silver plant out at the empty yeah, space? Just how many how many acres will this occupy? About 20. 20 acres, huh? So is that the size of the parcel of land out there? Uh, it's 80, 80 acres. 80 acres. It's bigger than that, right? Well, it's a, it'd be the north north quarter. And Iowa owns that piece of land already. Correct. Right. Okay, thank you. Yep. Wasn't sure of that. Yep. What will it cost for us to get that property on salt on that last thing that we got? We have to get everything ready for to set up. What will that cost? Is that included in this? I've got that number somewhere. I was thinking. What that number is, I'll have to look that up. <laughs> How much the prep is for it? Prep, we got to, we got to put the lanes in for it, we got to prepare the ground for them, we got to put a driveway in, we got to put in internet, everything, yeah. Um, also, will our electric department be able to absorb this when we get it in eight years, or will we have to increase our personnel on that? I, I think this will be something that we'll be able to manage the cross between the distribution and the, the power production group um, as far as the maintenance. How many people will they have in that eight years working out here? Um, I don't know how many. I, honestly, I can't answer that. I don't know that there's a number. It's, a, it's a fixed. It yeah, 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 it's a fixed system. We don't see a lot of maintenance on it, but uh, there is some maintenance. And that certainly would work with the city to educate them to understand it yeah. yeah. What's the cost going to be when, uh, for to buy out RE, REC or because they've got rights yeah. to that? Yeah, I don't know. That's another topic altogether. Um, basically, the only thing that that is is if we um, and we're working on on that that process of, of that service territory. Um, at most, that's we have to pay eight percent on the utility usage that we have at that. A, it's a markup, is that correct? Yeah. Um, but that's not the generation there. It's not it's the only what you, you only pay them if you're using the energy there, not if you're generating energy there. That's going to be pretty small. 
So it should be a negligible fee because this won't use a whole lot of it. But again, by, by year 910, um, I think with the way that works, that, that service district can revert back to us if we start filing paperwork within 10 years. Kim, what are you thinking? <laughs> <laughs> was there somebody else that we were talking about that was in this, that was looking at doing this? Was it Sapetha? Well, uh, Chanute's looking at it. Um, there's several municipalities around Kansas and Missouri are in the process of it. You guys were the very first two to sign the agreements and go through the engineering study. So we could kind of be a pilot study program for other towns. Uh, yeah, I mean, along with Ball and City and Chino. I mean, Westar knows how to build generation, and they've built a lot of generation. They've built a lot of wind farms. So this isn't quite like we're a guinea pig. I mean, right. that's, <laughs> they know a little bit about generation. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to date myself a little bit here, but my freshman year in high school, the topic for speech and debate was that the U.S. government should use more renewable energy or encouraging, and that was 25 years ago. Uh, and that was about 20, 22, 23 years ago, and that was the topic that the U.S. government should use more renewable energy. This is just the way it's going. You know, this is just where it's trending. And I remember what Mark said, I don't know, a few months ago, and it really rang with me. Let's move our town into the future, into the 21st century, and this is a way we can do it right here. Yeah. On that, just real quick, it's roughly um, fifty-six thousand dollars worth of city improvements. But um, I would say over half of that is just counting our our labor and our equipment usage. Um, we'll probably maybe twenty on the materials that we would be purchasing. Donna. I got two comments. One, one. I just want to make a statement. My daughter has a house just a little smaller than mine, and my whole bill, whole bill, is less than her electric. And so, I feel pretty fortunate for what I pay. And mine, mine has never been very high. Now I know I'm only one person in there. The other thing you said something. I was for education. You said that you train the college kids. On those panels, did you say that? Yeah, we're what, what we're doing is we're making our environmental group available See, to them. That. Part of them. That's our future. I mean, the other the other thing that we would be doing is you know as we install the system, setting it up, we would want to have you know any city personnel that want to be there learn how it's being set up and, and create it. You know that they're there from day one to to understand how it works. See, I'm for the environmental, I'm for teaching the kids because I don't think we haven't been learning our environment. Watch what's been happening all over the world. Harry, I haven't heard a lot from you. Yeah, I'm just trying to digest it all. When's the, the start, projected start date on this? The, the second, I believe the second quarter of 2020. But they want to get moving now because they can start getting the tax breaks. And so, how long would it take to be up and running well, once you break ground. Well, I think it would take six months. I think they would break ground again, maybe the first, I don't know the particular time frame for sure, but uh, it'd be uh, taking delivery 2021. Okay. So again, they will be right in the ITC, the investment tax credits this year, take advantage of that, they can buy the panels, they can buy the inverters and some of that stuff and could go forward, take advantage of those. So six months to complete the project. That's my understanding. So is the bottom line, after the buyout is complete, the consumer will save money? Yes. That's the yes, bottom line? That's not what's not necessarily. Well, it's, it's at 29, the number, Kim, no, the, the answer is the number, if you have enough cash, even if you don't have enough cash, if you have to finance the whole thing, which you've got half of it today, but if you, you would pay 35, the numbers we have is you pay about $35 a megawatt hour. And today, or tomorrow, during some of those peak hours, they were 41, 40, 42 dollars. So that's a cheaper product. Not only are you getting it at 35 dollars, you're also getting two and a half megawatts, or almost three megawatts of capacity that you're not paying. You, didn't, you just paid 1.5 million for this, or 
Rough one point, I'm sorry, one point three, one point one one. I'm sorry, one point one for four megawatts. And that's so you're getting capacity out of that energy as well. I, so if I took that capacity out, now we're under I, under I would dollars. like to correct both Mark and Ron on that. Because of the ECA, when we buy a product at forty, that product is sent on to the customer at that price. So if we're buying this at twenty nine and normally we'd be buying at 35 or 40, that is saving the customer because it's only charging them this 29 once you buy out the product. So that's after how many years? Seven, eight years? Seven, eight years, yeah. But that is ultimately saving it because if we have to buy that product at 50, we're still sending that to the customer, right? And instead, right now we're saying we're sending this to you at 29. Well, you're so, talking also after 30 years, well, after 20 years, they start to Panels aren't working as well. They diminish every year. That's, that's, that's factored into this. And then at the end of 25, 30 years, speaking environmentally, you've got to recycle these because you can't take them over to the landfill and throw them away or take them to raise them. But, they've got lead in them, they've got chromium in them, they've got cadmium but, in them. But correct me if I'm wrong on this one as well. Many of those that were put up in the 70s are still generating. They're still some. generating. Again. It's, they, it's diminished, but they're still generating. So at it's, year 30, they won't just turn off. So in theory, you've got working. free power. You've got some L&M and you got inverters and stuff. But for the most part, now we're talking about $5 a megawatt hour instead of 48 or 35. Now, when we got it all paid off, if you will, at year 30, it's still going to produce power and it's going to be $5. And again, we're talking about seven or eight percent of your entire load. We're going to lock in, and again, the, really the twenty-five percent of our exposure to the market, we're locking in. And that's usually whenever we're paying the premium prices. Correct. So, for the first eight years, we pay forty-eight dollars megawatt hour, no matter what. Seventeen and eighteen, we pay twenty-six dollars. That's a blend. That's a blend for all all energy. Back to um, back to if I bought 200 gallons at two dollars and I bought uh, 15 gallons at eight dollars, my blend is going to be two dollars and ten cents. That's right. I mean, the average, take blending it all together. But, but our 48 dollars is going to increase our our rate. There is an increase. Correct. But right. notice notice on this peak price that we're paying 40.42. During this 24-hour load right now, um, last year during that peak price, like from when we're running this, and we're not paying transmission fees anymore. But we don't well, have we never went over forty-eight dollars an hour. Without the, but we're, that doesn't. I don't well, there, there's been hours that we paid over over fifty dollars for power. That, for, that for graph hours. was generated by one day in June's pricing, which we were just trying to grab. Okay, this is going to be us. Would be when we'd have. Um, good solar production, and that's what the pricing did that day. Um, so that wasn't a, that wasn't a. So there are some days that we would be paying on the market 50, 50 55. You yeah. paid 100. Yeah. You paid $150. Okay. Not for many hours, but you have paid more than $48 per hour. Um, so it just, again, locks in your, your market prices. Just, just so it's forty eight dollars is, is on the twenty two megawatts that are yeah, that we're buying. So no, this is for nice what we're getting from the, for, it's for uh, four and a half megawatts of, of energy per hour. That's what we're getting off the solar farms and forty eight four. Correct. And then at year eight yeah. we charge it drops those prices dramatically. Because we're getting a mix like the wind farm from Kingman we're paying what twenty twenty two ninety two today and it's blended up to about thirty after year twenty. So again, kind of the average, really low prices today. They're growing as well. Natural gas prices are low today, under two dollars today, about a buck fifty. They've been up to three or four dollars, and so that's where natural gas prices, where, where power prices are based on what natural gas prices are. And so when natural gas prices are low, we're seeing a low market prices. As natural gas rises, we're seeing higher higher power prices. I.e., this winter when it's cold out, and everyone's using natural gas. Power prices went up because natural, natural gas, gas prices went up. Okay. We'd have at least been able to lock in some of that power. May I ask a question? Just out of curiosity, but as far as the technology is concerned, the early 80s, my family bought a solar heater. Days like this, but had no heat. Right. 
how does the new technology reflect this? It's a good question. Uh, I don't know. I'm not an expert on solar, but I do have a solar plant farm that I watch quite a bit. And there is some production, just not, you know, not to the level of four and a half megawatts. We'd, we'd have maybe, I don't know, 10% or 20%. But again, whatever we get, that's going to be better than not getting any. So, um, but it's surprising how much we can get. Right? Yes. Thanks for coming in here and subjecting yourself to all this. <laughs> what about me? You said to get You said to Okay, you're talking to me. Okay. You're, you're paid. You're paid. Right? You're used to it. Um, and before I, I ask you a question, I, I'd like to put the council on the spot here. Just a quick show of hands. Um, if, this, if this were your thesis or high school senior project or, or something that was important to you or something that might cost citizens nearly seven million uh, seven million dollars <clears throat> how many of us here are would be comfortable enough to stand up at the podium and and say everything you know about this project and feel comfortable in your knowledge base who here feels like they've really got this thing and they've got it at all angles they got it on the back of their hands, the front of their hands, the side of their hands, the back of their head. Who really? So, who here feels that they understand this project that well? Mm -hmm. well I do. I mean, I've been doing some research and some, you know, I don't, I don't, reading I'm on just it. And, should, should and we have two people? Yeah. Three. Okay. So I mean, so you, you see me, I asked a number of questions well, tonight that yeah. have okay. come up in my mind right. since the last meeting and I've been doing some looking. Do you know how much the total project, project costs West Star? Neither do I. <laughs> no, well, it's... So, no, I, I don't want to get the, you know... I don't want I, to those, those numbers have actually been given to us, and it's around 1.25 million per megawatt that's, that they have to put in, minus the tax rebates, plus some of their labor and other things. So what um, remember that? as well that West Star is factoring in, this is why they're charging us this premium for the first years, they're factoring in that they're losing the customer too. I just, want, I just want to know if this council truly understands this project. I don't... What, what is the total? He just rattled off a lot of variables outside the, the, the cost. What, what's this cost, West Star? So if, what I want to know is if the city were to not involve West Star or Evergy, what would it cost for us to just go to this project on our own? I don't know that you know that number. I don't have uh, The number is going to be roughly, uh, I would, I'm guessing, and again, there's some confidentiality okay. in that number. That's fair. So I don't know how you want to approach that, I guess. No, that's, that's fair. Because if you can't answer it, if, if you can't answer it or if it's not a legal question to answer, that's fine. Um, so our cost, when this is all said and done, based on our best projection, is six million seven hundred thirty-six thousand one hundred fifteen dollars. And for the most part, these are just estimates, right? These are just the, the, no, that, that the, those, those the are actuators. The generated. insurance is an actual number. Insurance is the O and M an actual number? Those are quoted in, in estimates. I mean. The, we don't, I mean, the only way that we're going to have action numbers is like you're behind. Right. No. And, and we're not, so that's. Like, the, the inverters are pretty well fixed. They, yeah, the yeah, inverters are pretty. pretty uh, yeah, I would say and, in. And let me just, let me back up just a little bit because a month and a half ago, just my very nature is I want to be forward thinking and I like the idea of solar. I like the idea of being green. I, you know, I think that's, that's the cool thing to do right now. So, so. Six weeks ago, if you'd asked me, I thought, man, this is a great idea, but I, you know, I'm pretty conservative-minded, so the closer we got to this, the more sleep I lost. And the more sleep I lost, the more sleep I lost, and I would stay up asking myself, what am I losing the sleep about? You know, this is, a, this is a good project. And what I'm losing the sleep about is we're, we're putting the citizens of Iola on the hook for $6.7 million, right? Okay. And if we had $6.7 million sitting in the bank, like we had today when we made that generation purchase, I would feel more comfortable about this. But what we're saying is, 
we're going to make this agreement, and in six, in six, seven, eight, nine years, we will have the money saved. That's essentially what this comes down to. And I'm not comfortable. I'm not comfortable making that decision. That's that's where I'm at. In seven years, but I'm. What kind, but what kind of vision are we offering our citizens then? Like, if we can't say I have a seven-year vision for this city, what are we doing here? Like, why are we here if we can't say I have a five, a 10, a 15, and a 20-year vision? If we can say, like, I'm only going to look 30 days in advance or to the next meeting, I think that's all really pointless. No, we need to be offering vision and leaders of this community. No, we have a fundamental difference of opinion on, on vision. We can agree on where we want to be, but we disagree on where, where our finances Which, which your $6.7 million dollars also doesn't factor in is we have to buy that energy one way or the other. One way or the other, we have to buy 228,000 megawatts. That's what we're estimating with decline. Over that 30 years, and that's, more, that's almost the price itself, at $30, 228,000 megawatts at $30 is that 6.8 million. That's it. That's the number that matters for 30 years. And if you're saying it's a $6.7 million project, well, right there, there's a hundred thousand dollar profit. I'm not willing to gamble six point seven million dollars for a hundred thousand dollar gain. No, I, I, I think no investor would do that. What Mary Wells is trying to say is, it does not matter if we do this project or not. We are still going to need to buy energy, and it's going to cost us money to buy that energy, and it's going to cost our citizens and our electric customers money to buy that energy. This is a product, an energy product for ourselves um, that we think we can, in the long run, it's going to be a cheaper product that we buy than if we wait, wait it out, we don't buy, we don't do the, the solar and we just um, stay, with, stay with the market the way we are. Um, that, that, that's the, that's, to me, that's the bottom line. We're gonna to have to buy the power of the network. But, and it's all, yes, and it's all based on an estimate of what we will purchase, what our rate will be on the market, versus what we project to generate generate ourselves off of solar, which is based on sun, right? Mm -hmm. So again, like he mentioned earlier, that's really an un unknown variable. But they, they did the study that they go through years and years worth of I would appreciate it if I could finish what I'm trying to say before you interject. This is all guesswork to me. Educated guesswork. Yeah, I mean, there's certainly science behind it. We don't, we, here's, here's what, here's what we're, here's, here's, here's where, here's where it comes to head for me. We want to have $6.7 million invested in this project. We, we're looking at solar and Sid's perspective on, on the different departments being self-sufficient Water doesn't impact electric, electric doesn't impact water, gas doesn't, but they do. And we have rising fire department costs. We have a 54 highway project, but we have no idea what's gonna cost us. We have an elementary school that's coming in that we don't know what we're gonna be requested for that. We can't afford $26,000 a year in bump spray. What's the cost of giving up this lease to Strickler gonna be? I'm not confident I know what the infrastructure cost is going to be or what the maintenance projects, what the maintenance costs are going to be each over this 20 or 30 years. So what kind of science do you need? I don't need science. I need us to save the money and then make a commitment to the project. That's what I want to do. So then you're a no. At this point, I am. So, well, what, 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 so what do you need to be a yes? Is there anything other than us having $2 million extra dollars in the bank? to get us to 3.7. I would like to see us at least get through this year's budget so the administration can show us how they plan to set aside $250,000 a year to get us to this project. Because the last four budgets that I've been a part of, it's been uh, pour this jar over here and pour this jar over here and pour this jar over here so we can make the budget work. Now That's we can correct. miraculously say, we'll set, set, we'll set aside $250,000 extra. We've been setting aside that money, though, for the last 10 years to get to this 2.1. The problem was, before this, we were projecting at $1.2 $1 million per megawatt when we were looking at the natural gas. 
And that's what we were told, um, and that's what we believed um, under the previous administrations, and since found a way to save on that capacity charge, and saying you don't really need this natural gas if you can generate between solar and have the capacity in diesel. And so we've been saving up for that $10 million charge, and keep saving for it to get back that capacity. Either we invest in our infrastructure, or we don't. Yeah, but I mean, in, ten, capacity for money to in 10 to 15 years, to 15 years, that price might be double to for this project. Solar technology, you know, technology gets cheaper as you move forward. It doesn't become more expensive. Again, just maybe I've, maybe I've done a poor job of this, but you are going to spend about three and a half million dollars on energy a year, and whether you buy it from the market and you, you know, it's you either you pay your stock and you hope the stock goes up or down or whatever it is, or you you lock, layer in different stuff, and that's really what we've done. We've layered in some different stuff, and so. Um, you're going to spend three million, three and a half million dollars a year. Uh, this product is uh, for the seven years is roughly you know, for per year is about four hundred thousand uh, dollars. All those things are whether you like it or not. Those are all passed through to your customers, and those that's a rate design. That's a design that's passed through to your customers. Again, whether you do this deal or not, you're naturally if if, if, if you don't do anything and natural gas goes to eight dollars this this summer. You're going to pay $75 or $80 a megawatt hour, and your your energy cost adjustment isn't a, I don't remember it's a penny and a half or two cents, whatever it is. It may be four cents per kilowatt hour. So again, I understand the, the cost and the expenses of you're buying this out. And again, you don't have to buy it out. You don't. That's an option you could do if pay your eight, your I don't know, eleven, and your whatever. You don't have to buy it out. You could not save any money and do the $47, $48 deal, and you're good. Which would be much well, higher than which is average. Which is higher, which is higher today, yes. Again, you're getting capacity with that. And, but again, all that is passed through to your customers. And then whether you like it or not, that's the way the structure is. That's what, that's what Westar does to their customers. That's what Kansas Gas Service does on their customers. Everybody passes it and says, here's, here, I've got four cents in my, in my rate, of, my rate, 10 cents, Four cents of that is my cost of power, and if my cost of power is six cents, I've got a two cent ECA. And so that structure is, is going to be passed through to your customers. And to say it's going to be higher today, yeah, it will probably be higher today for the next few years. But I'm saying as a long-term structure and having the residuals of, a, of an energy uh, environmentally friendly product plus the capacity you're getting, you're saving, like I said, we're trying to beat the same thing. It's $100,000 a year that you're saving on your rate that you can apply, continue to apply in the rates that you charge your customers in the ECA, in the energy cost adjustment. So when the, the energy costs go up, we pass it on to our customers. Yes, sir. So when we go and we raise this for the next eight years of $48, we're guaranteed that our customers' prices will go up. They will probably go up. Yes, absolutely. Not necessarily. It depends on that market price. That's what you just said. I, yes, it depends. I, I, we get another what, what past right. history? Yes, it's higher than today. To so, me, you're like, okay, you're gambling on the price. You're gambling if we can save the money to pay for the six million dollar. Okay. I don't know. I think we need to be careful with the terms we throw out there. I mean, I can all say we probably sat here and we've lost sleep over this. This is a big decision, okay? But throwing out words, it was a gamble, putting the citizens on the hook. I just don't think that's fair. It's I, a I, risk. I, is that it's a risk. risk. It's a Everything's risk. risk. Everything it's that comes risk. across our table is a risk. Right. We're leaders that's of this community. I just think we need to be careful with the terms that we put out there. I don't feel like... I understand it well enough or have the knowledge or the grasp over everything to make an intelligent, informed decision. Yes, I think renewable energy is a wonderful thing. Yes, we should, you know, go green, let's save our planet. But I don't feel like I understand everything well enough. I mean, it would be like, you know, throwing me into a I mean, I agree, Nancy, I but wouldn't you, wouldn't you agree, too, that most things that come across to us, we're, we're not experts in the field. You're we're right. just here to represent the citizens. But this is a, this is a big thing. Well, it's a and very I want big thing. To I'm not sure that I am making a very informed, intelligent decision. But how much longer do we need? As a council, how much longer do we feel like we need on this? It's been nearly a year. Hold, hold on. Not with this much information, it hasn't been. 
we've had most of this information out for over a month to us. Well over a month. I who, who, has, I has, who has set up meetings with Sid um, or, or emailed? Mm -hmm. I have an email and attempted meetings that last week kind of I guess my point is this. Chanute's going to move forward. And here's the thing. Chanute's going to move forward. How much flack did we get over Chanute getting an Arby's? Chanute got an Arby's, and I heard about it for months, and I still hear about Chanute's Arby's. Is Chanute doing it, or is Ash Grove doing it? Well, the city is doing it. So the city of Chanute is going to be forward-thinking and says, this is something that's going to be beneficial to us in the long term. Do they have money saved, though, or do they have to fork out the whole? They're probably going to finance it. I want to have, has anybody from West Star visited with our college here to find out what kind of partnerships we can have here? Has anybody approached that before to say, okay, we've got this project, but this is what it is. But I'm just saying. That's though, part before the horse, because if we're not going to do it, why waste their time? If, you're not interested, if you guys aren't interested in West Star's not going to, I mean, no offense, they're not going to go to that extent to that work. Um, again, you don't have to do it. I, I think it makes sense to do it. Do we have to make this decision tonight? Yeah. I just, mm. I, I still am trying to digest all of it. It's this. a lot to take, but I think we have said here, you know, we've, we've gone over solar and we're like, well, let's push it But tonight's explanation has explained some of the stuff that's here and, you know, listening to Scott explain the different ways that the costs are figured in. I would just like some time to digest it. I thought the consumer would save money right away, but obviously that's not going to be the case. It, it's hard to say. I'm, I won't use any words, guarantees, or that. I, I don't know. I, I can just tell you that you're, what you're doing is you're basically locking in right. some exposure, right. that you have risk today that the market could be higher than this. Scott, when do we need to have this? I don't believe it has to be tonight. I need to talk to Brandon and my yeah. associate, um, but I think there's still time. The, really, the bottom line was September is too late. Um, really, they need to they need to start again. You can do it in September. You can make the decision. The price may be higher. Uh, they, what the decision is, they're really what they're wanting to do is put some uh, uh, monitoring equipment to start getting the solar uh, this summer, so you can start getting credit for capacity and those kind of things. So, so. the investment tax credits start rolling off as we move forward. Right. And so basically, it's just a matter of trying to capture the, the maximum value on. Which, they, they don't go away all of them overnight. Right, and, and try to try to again pool the cities together. So now we're not just buying four and a half megawatts; we're buying thirteen or twenty-five megawatts of panels and inverters. And, and again, all that pricing has been. So, so city and Iola, Chinu, we're we're kind of you're, this is kind of a package deal. You're working it's on. not it, again. It doesn't have to be. This is just a partnership that was structured that says, okay, if we go together, again, you guys don't have to do it; they can do it, or vice versa. Uh, just that helps drive down those prices, the panels, inverters, and racking that they were going to pass on to us. So that was the thought. Uh, um, see, I, when I ran for office almost five years ago, some pretty intelligent people I looked up to said, always trust your experts. So I always kind of went back on that. So um, there's a big part of me that, that trusts what you're doing. There's a big part of me that's ultra conservative on this kind of project. Uh, I just want, I have one last question. Um, we have the department head here to to handle the zoning requests. We don't have department heads here to discuss a six to seven million dollar project. But th those are that that's that strikes me as odd. They honestly I they've asked Mike asked if he want, if I needed him here, I told and he was gonna be working his, his mom out this evening, and I said, you are more than welcome here, but I'm not going to require that you're here. Uh, we haven't made a habit of having department heads here for every um, decision that we make. Um, the idea is, is I'm in communication with them, they're in communication with me, I, I communicate with council. But and, and you didn't need that for the two million, one point two million dollars we just all passed unanimously. Mike was at the last meeting. We've been discussing the saving generation money for that purchase for years. Same with this. This is generation. generation. We this came up we, what six months ago? This came up a year, year and a half ago. We haven't saved a dime for it. When we started talking about it, so we started talking to 
when we first started talking, we started talking with the big industries. And if you had missed that meeting, or if you were at that meeting, I was at the meeting, they, and they were interested. They, several of them were. This was a better, this so was a better asked. system. This was a better system. It wouldn't have been brought up first if it was a better system. We are finding ourselves at a point where we find ourselves too often as a council, and it has gotten ridiculous. We are sitting here chasing our tails. I, okay, I think we just need to take a step back. What do we want to do here? You want to table, table on this? I would like to, I'd like to make a motion that we table this to the first meeting in September. I don't think we need to table it that long, but I would like to at least table it for, you know, at least two weeks so that we've got time to digest this. I've got time to understand it. I've got time to talk to people and figure out, is this necessary? What do our citizens even think? What do they want? I mean, we've heard from a few. I've been available. That, and, and that's fine, but what I'm saying, though, is now out. that I've got a little bit better understanding I have listening to this conversation, I probably can come up with intelligent questions. So you want to we make sure you want till September? I'd like to see us get through this budget and see how this We've got a motion and a second on September. Um, I, I tend to lean more towards Nancy that we should get this done in June. Um, if we can get this done in two weeks, that's another two weeks we've had this conversation. Um, September seems time to understand it and really, really talk that, that to gives people. you two full another uh, motion in the second to so the first week of September. Then motion and second, and all those in favor, please show voting signs. September, September opposed for September. For September, September motion fails. And okay, make I would a like motion. To, whoa, I whoa, whoa, whoa. Who made Ron. the second? Who seconded the motion? Ron. <laughs> because Nancy said she seconded. No, no, no. I did. He, no. he seconded it. She asked the question seconded. afterwards. Yeah. Yeah. I would like to table it for two weeks until our next meeting and possibly have some time to get together, to talk about it, to talk about it. with our citizens, with everybody. I just want to understand it more. I do not want to make a decision on something that I don't fully understand. I'll second that. There is a motion and a second to table this until our next regularly scheduled meeting. All those in favor, please show a voting sign. Opposed, same sign. Motion passes. John, may I make an analogy? Sure. Uh, I've been around more than you know. And when we asked for that school bond several years ago, we could get a 50% paid for by the government. And we voted against, not me, but the town voted against us. And I've been in this town 54 years, and I have only seen two things pass previous to this last one, and that was rebuilding, rebuilding, rebuilding. But things get higher. I've lived long enough to know my salary's not getting higher, but everything else is getting higher, and I expect it. I may not like it, but I expect it because I know it's going to happen. But this school, now they're not paying nearly as much from the government. We're paying more and getting less. We're getting the three things that we voted on. But every time we have an opening, and I don't mean this meanly, and I appreciate it, that you guys care about the money I care about because I hear from people, they write at me all the time and I'm not even on the commissioners. But literally, I've been here long enough to see when they're saying, hey, you can finance this, we have to take a chance sometimes. We did it on the school, now we're paying more for less. Yeah, but we're Little. still, we're still paying on a water plant. That was just a, com that was a comment we're gonna move forward. Uh, I, I, I would like to request that we do have the department can we have a special meeting instead of instead of saying let's just wait two weeks can we have it the motion has been made and second and pass it on the next regular agenda no, i said two weeks we can do it in two weeks we can do what? i mean in two weeks it doesn't have to be on the regular agenda but don't we want to do we want to have all of our discussion that day just wait for the last minute to have our discussion again or we want to actually discuss this throughout the next two weeks. Who's going to help me understand it? That's what. <laughs> Expert. Like, well, I need to understand I, I, it. I would, I, would, I would appreciate the opportunity to have a one on one okay. with, with anybody that has questions on that because I think that would, will help okay. with some of the questions. But there again, I've been available, but nobody's. Aaron's emailed me. That's about all the communication I got. Um, and that's, that's the only way that we as staff can try to help council, especially when you're having trouble understanding something, is you have to communicate back to us so that we understand the questions that you have. And if it's and if it's just at ground zero that, hey, I really don't, I just need kind of help you get going, 
That's fine too. That's what we're here for. But you have to communicate with us. Um, item C, hydroelectric. Okay. Uh, there we go. Uh, we've had, uh, we, I'm sorry, the city of Iola has had uh, SPA, Southwest Power Administration Power, for um, at least 30, 35 years. Uh, the contract expires in four or five days. Um, we, uh, we thought we were done with it. We thought we could uh, not renew it. We found out we can't really, un un we can't uh, renew it. We, we need to renew it, I guess, is the bottom line. We're not going to go through KMEA. That's another energy agency that they basically, if you will, they did the contract with Southwest Power Administration and they charged us, I mean, I'm trying to cut to the chase of it, if you will. They charged us $1,000 a month. Again, some more costs we're going to save. There's $12,000 a year that we're going to go. We're going to go direct to Southwest Power Pool. The I'm sorry, South. Uh, I want to keep calling it. I'll call it SPA, uh, Southwest Power Administration. Uh, we're going to save $12,000 a year to just go straight to them as a supplier and bring that power in. Now it's very similar to solar, but different. Uh, this will be. I figured you'd be a head shaking somewhere. Yeah. Uh, we basically, again, if you look at that load profile, and I, if you look at that, I don't know, page four or five, whatever, uh, said you had that hourly load profile. Yeah, Nancy has that. Uh, and and small didn't show up in there because it's such a small amount. Yeah, it it's minuscule. Yeah. It's about two percent of our entire bill. Um, and it, that, what page is that, Nancy? This four is page over. Five, page five, uh, four or five. Six in the previous. Okay, so that load profile, that hourly load profile, will show you that's the demand per month, per hour, each each hour, as the air conditioners get kicked on and the you know community, community college is on or whoever is firing up their their power, right? And so that load profile each hour jumps up and down. Um, what he, in this particular example, we have 900 kW, so we've got a 900 kW generator, but it's at SPA, and we basically have the opportunity to have this purchase power agreement for the next 15 years. And that purchase power agreement has ranged anywhere from $30 when it was a lot of rain, and we get supplemental energy, or we haven't had any rain, and they can't push, they, they basically provide us a firm product, and it's been about $70. A megawatt hour. So, um, so it ought to be about a penny now. <laughs> should, should be free. Should be a negative number, right? You're right. There's a lot of power, a lot of excess water. So a lot of dams, a lot of generators, and so a, you're, Nancy, you're catching on. So a lot of water, a lot of power, and it's, but we're still paying this demand component, which again, kind of instead of paying what you guys just did, this is a monthly payment. It's a finance mechanism, however you want to. It's the federal government, they have a PPA. And so we're paying uh, for that power for the year, for, for 15 years. We're gonna, and what we would like to do is extend that agreement for 15 years, and it ranges again from no rain and no water to 70 or $80 a megawatt hour per month, and it goes down to $30 a megawatt hour. Um, and what I wanted to show you on that profile, what we do on that particular hour, we take 900 kW and we put it on the highest priced hours. Again, the same thing we're talking about with solar. We said, okay, we think that our 15, 16, 17, and 18 are our highest, our highest priced hours. We're gonna put a megawatt of generation on and with this Southwest power, with the spa power, and we're putting those, we're putting in, we're, we're designating those hours to put that generation online, if you will. Uh, so it's really the same thing, we just have more control over the nomination of the spa power rather than the solar, we, you know, whatever the setting, right? So it's virtually the same thing, we're just trying to figure out what the highest priced hours are, and we're trying to, trying to put that over, uh, lay that spa power over those hours. Um, so, um, what we, so again, I would recommend you sign that, approve it, and move forward with it. Uh, if we, if we, we do have somebody that we think we can, we can pass that off, if you will, we're going to, there's a loan borrow program, and we can loan it to somebody else for 10 years, and then in 10 years we can get that back. 
So this is the one we were talking about leasing that leasing energy to, load, to load somebody to, else, to someone else for, in. For, ten, ten, for 10 years. Um, but there's some work to be done with SBP, the Southwest Power Pole Transmission Provider, and bringing in the provide, bringing in the third party into our pool, or to go study to move this power from this pool to another uh, load entity. So all that is insignificant to you. All that we're really saying is, do you want this piece of power uh, for the next 15 years? Again, it's almost identical to the discussion we just had with solar. It's basically saying I'm putting. These, this generator online for those hours, those peak hours, what we think tomorrow is going to look like, and we're going to say, okay, between 17, 15, 16, 17, and 18 hours, and then we think that's the highest price hours, we're going to put that up. We're going to put that, so we're going to take care of 900 kW of that load during that, those hours. Is that what the scheduling agent does? So that's what the scheduling agent does. That's what Westar does for us today. And we and they we basically say we want seven megawatts. And they they say seven megawatts every hour. And that's we say we want page four, section eight, that there would be a scheduling agent. That that's what they are. They're, that's what they're already doing. There's no additional fee to that. Again, we're going to save twelve thousand dollars a year yeah. for. That's what KME was doing. That correct. Let's start. We'll do that. That's right. correct, Mark. Right. I just want to know who it was. Yep. So how much is this going to cost us <laughs> now? Uh, Two thousand a year is it, that the number? It's basically costing you. Uh, well, uh, you know, a normal month, again, we're talking about $8,000 a month. It's going to cost you $100,000 a year. You were probably spending $112,000 a year. It, it, there's really no difference in what you're paying today. It's, again, you're just saving $12,000. This is a product that we've already had. We've had it for you 15, have it. It's 20 in your, years. It's in your ECA. It's in your, your energy cost adjustment. There's nothing different there. It's just an extension of this contract for 15. But if we can find somebody else who needs it, then we don't have that expense. Correct. Paid. We can pass that on. You bet. I just needed some clarification. It says on the front page of this, it talks about nine to ten thousand per year to schedule the power. Nine to ten thousand know. dollars. Yeah. That uh, was Katie. That was Katie. I, 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 it's probably closer to a thousand a month. But if, it, if he said nine to ten thousand dollars, I was using twelve thousand. Our cost a year for this is we'll, we'll be we'll go down twelve thousand maybe right well, well no you're, but you're, that's that is just the cost when KEA was scheduling the power you still were paying for the for the product the product is what you said the product is roughly eight seven or eight thousand dollars a month and why again we more get water I'm sorry what was the reason we couldn't get out of it. I, I know we talked about getting out of this, and we came back and said, "Well, you, you can. It just uh, it won't let you. <laughs> we got to do a lot of work to get rid of it. And I would recommend it's actually not a bad product if we can if we get a lot of rain, and we can get additional transmission. And yeah. we're working on and they're working on getting the transmission approved, so that would help our pricing in there again. If that doesn't come out, we can always right. do the loan program. And actually, we have they." They are getting ready to adjust their pricing, and whenever they adjust right. their pricing, we, can get out we have six months to <coughs> uh, opt out of, of any change. So if by the time the loan program isn't set up, and we're like, hey, we really, and the transmission part doesn't come through, then we can opt out at that point. Right. So did we not opt out in time? We, 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 if we don't sign it, we still have it. We just won't take the power of the summer, which really. I guess I'm just. No, I'm I don't. Trying to pick this up. No, 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 no. I'm no. trying to distill to the essence of why we went from wanting to get rid of this to now we don't want it. Or why we can't. Well, we, we, just, I we made a decision like six months ago that we were going to cut No, this. You're, you're dead on. Now we're back to. We thought we were going to get. We thought we were going to be done with it, and they came so back. So it's almost like it's almost like it's almost like you were born into the family and you can't get out of the family without some. <laughs> That's basically how it works. So. <laughs> and, and again, kind of what, what we found like out. We have to find a replacement. We also found out that we could get out of the contract if they did any modification to, the, to their power, to their rate, okay. and they're doing that today. That's what Sid's saying. So we have six months. If this thing doesn't, if we don't get these three things, we can, we're, we can get out. <laughs> right. We can. Because this this rate you mentioned, it's it's on average. I, I don't have it in front of me, but I thought. Was it in the 50s or 60s? 50s to 60 dollars, right. So it's not a good, really a good product it, to again, have. Also, I, I don't think it's a bad product. It's not a great product. But, well, but again, and that, and that fluctuates. I bet you it's pretty cheap right now. And if right. we stay, we stay underwater, 
I mean, yeah, I think that's I why, mean, we, why we look at averages. So the, right, right. It's 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 been a we haven't been able to get enough transmission to get the entire benefit of that contract. As if we win, we think we're going to get transmission. We, and then, like I said, we can get out of it if we can't. If we can't do these things, and I like the things that we, we have options to do. So you said that we had to get we had to get rid of it. Do we have to find a replacement? No. For it? Well, I have a re replacement for it. Uh, the federal government is going to open up that uh, this this fall, and we'll see if we get our our partner, if you will, tied up together. If not, they have they'll, they'll find somebody else. Again, if so we if, don't find if, if if they don't find anybody to borrow it. Then we again we can get out of it. So if we don't do this, then we just buy the entry on the market. Correct. Which is then relatively pretty significantly lower. Currently, yes. And that fifty, the uh, fifty sixty dollar average, did that include the monthly fees? Yes. So again, no, no, it's going to be about a solar product, a solar price product, it's about a fifty dollar product. So that includes the transmission. That includes everything. That, that's that's. I don't know why we would keep it if we're trying to get away from those prices. You're, you're kind of hedging here and saying that you're hedging and saying you're getting, you're getting capacity. <laughs> yeah, that's, you're getting you're getting 900 kW. You're getting another generator, if you will, for 900 kW that you don't have to buy. You don't. To currently today, you've got that 900 kW generator in your portfolio. When you don't do that, you're going to pay 1,800 dollars a month. Uh, thirty twenty two thousand dollars a year. So it's all about what you've got in your shed, not what you use. Absolutely. You, all you want that's what you just did with your generator with your diesel generators. You just want to show So if you've got that uh, power my, tool for someone else to borrow, you're good to go. My load is twenty eight megawatts. City load is twenty eight megawatts. <laughs> you with your Wartzillas and your current generation today, you've got twenty two and a half. So you're five and a half megawatts short. You've just bought four megawatts of generation. You have the what? You have the 900, and with the solar 2.7, you are going to have about 28 or 29, 30 megawatts of capacity. So then you are full. You've got. You're right. I just need to be able to point to that. All I want to be able to point to that generation, then I can go buy the cheap energy. Right. And so it depends. Now, now am I going to buy a block of that? So I can just turn the generator on. They can just turn on the generator. And forget about it. It's a lot cheaper because it's going to run 24/7. Right, I'm just gonna I forget. But if I have to run it from eight o'clock in the morning till ten o'clock at night, that's a higher price because the load profile. Then, as you see, it's not the same every hour. It's three hours this hour. It's eight hours, eight ten megawatts, fifteen, and it grows and it's shaped. And so it's us, the more that we've got sitting there that we can generate ourselves reduces what we have to pay to buy it someplace else. Yes. So you're better off to buy it, own it, stick it in your garage, in your you may back. never use it, Absolutely. but it's cheaper than going out and renting something do you own, three times Do you own or do you rent? Depends on capacity. Right. I mean, and theoretically, there are names here. No, <laughs> if, if we go over and we have excess capacity, we can actually sell that. We sell that. Say, no. And say, hey, you want to rent this power, this tool right. in the power shed? And somebody else, what we've been doing so is, is say, hey, you can't borrow it, you have to rent it. Right. Right. Okay. right. <laughs> no borrow. Well, we can borrow it too. If we buy the third, though, we won't have any capacity to buy at all. So. Or, uh, true, it's an option, but again, we're getting power, we're getting energy off of those. Again, we like when you first started this conversation 45 minutes ago, we don't want to run those diesel generators, we don't want to run them at all. We just have them just in case there's an ice storm or something, and your load is at, at, at a level that's above 22 megawatts. So, so and again, the bottom line is that we can we, we, we can get out of this. We can get back out to this. We can get out of this here in about three months or six months if we don't want to borrow. Or absolutely, we're not really locked into this. My option is there's no reason to get out of it today. I would sign the agreement, and we we can cancel it in six months. Clear as mud. So we want to make me a motion. I would make a motion to approve resolution 2019-16 power sales contract with the Southwestern Power Administration for hydropower entitlement and authorize the necessary signatures. Do we want to revisit it in five months? Or do we still want it? They'll bring it back to us in case it, in case it changes. Well, Is it? We're talking about a lot of changes going on here. They're going to they're going to be updating us on this product one way or the other. If we don't have a borrower or they're, uh, we don't have transmission, 
we'll be, I'll be back to tell you we need to either get rid of it or figure out a different solution to it. Is there a chance we would have a third generator by then, by six months? Uh, you're not going to have the generator installed okay. until next year. Okay. Right. Uh, uh, here's a motion and a second to approve resolution. A second. I second it. 2019-16, all those in favor, please show voting sign. Opposed, same sign. Can we take a 10-minute break? Getting close to done. Okay. They're taking care of the Let's get out. Let's, let's, let's move forward real quick if we can. Allen <laughs> County Rural Fire Department. All right. Very careful. Uh, Travis Bond's here with the Rural Fire Department. They uh, submitted a request for three hookups at the new fire barn that's going to be built uh, out by the Boyer Pond area, there, uh, Oregon, and 1400 just north of that location. Northwest Warner. Yeah. Right. We serve all the utilities to that, with the exception of sewer. Correct. Right. Um, and roughly, I had the department heads put together rough estimates on what it would cost to put those utilities in. Uh, less than less than thirteen hundred dollars, roughly. Uh, the water's already existing, basically set the meter, just the meter fee, uh, and the hookup connection fee, and the electric. Uh, I think there was a power pole that we had to install for overhead. Uh, relatively easy project, I guess. Uh, just looking for your guys' direction in the request, uh, whether we waive those costs or not. That's not electric is not in. What store? It's our territory. The water's in our territory too? For electric, water, gas, all the right. city. We go up about roughly two miles north of the town on that, in that area. So it's going to be in the northwest corner, across Directly. from McGraw's? Uh, straight north of McGraw's. All right. Okay. The property that we are building on has already been donated, it's deeded in our name, and we are just That's waiting good. for a contract for the contractor to see finalized before we start construction. What's he so, granted, the, after 16 years of begging and pleading, we finally got the approval to do so. This will be our department's very first station that it's ever owned since its establishment in 1966. You guys help a lot with the fire department here. With yes, like, we've done a lot of assistance with structural fires inside the city. I don't see any reason why we couldn't do that. We'll make the motion. Unless there's any more discussion. No, I just apologize. I didn't recognize that you are here for this item. Uh, Requested to move you up too. So. No, I was enjoying the solar. <laughs> <laughs> I would second that motion. There is a motion and a second to uh, approve the request by the Allen County Rural Volunteers. All those in favor, please show voting sign. Opposed, same sign. Motion passes. Thank you very much. Item F, chicken seal. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, our annual chip seal this year is in the southwest part of the town. Uh, we sent out the bids. We sent out uh, bids to the two potential vendors. There's only two in the area that can actually provide the, uh, the road oil for this project. Uh, Vance Brothers and Ergon uh, Company. Uh, we accepted those, received those bids on May 20th, and presented before you. We're asking to approve approximately buying 43,000 gallons of RS 1P emulsion oil from Ergon. Uh, for the chip seal project this year. Total cost on this was was what? Uh, well, I wrote that down. I didn't. Say it, so uh, I did. We got one hundred and seventy-five thousand allocated. Right. Down. So it looked like it came in a lot less. Well, that depends, depends on the rock purchases. Yeah. We've had a hard time buying that red rock over the last couple of years, so. We've got the rock in stock for this year, but we're going to try and get it. It's about a year out, roughly, on that rock, trying to get that red rock because it's a fire rock, and there's only one one vendor out there that can get it for us. Uh, so, so this number that we're voting on would be two dollars and six cents times forty-four, forty-three thousand. This is really hard to determine how much oil we're going to use. We base it on the city blocks. Up to forty-three thousand. Correct. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's a lot better than the old chips that we used to use, that white uh, rock oh, that we got in the So, that's so, so yeah. moving across the, the row there, the 12,162.85, is that, that's just, does that come into play on this? That's the cost per load, uh, per gallons. Uh, 
like I said, this is a little difficult to even explain because they throw in a they throw in a time for the truck offload times, and they neither one of them are ever the same. Uh, so we have to base it on a this approximate 43,000 gallons to get us to compare apples to apples here with Ergon what's going to be cheaper. Uh, I didn't bring the spreadsheet. I apologize, guys. And Dan, Dan could explain it a lot better than I do. Yeah, it, uh, I just was curious what the, what, what the actual amount this is. Well, why do we ship seal every year? We don't ship seal every year. I thought we do it in every four, five, five, five year five rotation years. now. Yeah, yeah. Dan would prefer a four year rotation. Right. All right, I get that. Dan would prefer a four year rotation on, but we back that off basically because of just allocation of dollars every year. Um, We've set the fifth year out now as being essentially the park and the cemeteries. Mm -hmm. uh, so that makes our four quadrants of town go out that fifth year. Um, but it brings that yearly total down in our budget. Uh, Why did we start doing it on that, that basis there? Basically, it's, it's, it's a preventative maintenance, all it is. It's just a seal, to crack fill those, those spots to keep the water from going down through the surface and breaking down the base. Did we have a study done that said that we needed done at this time? You wouldn't have supported the study. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we, we have one of the. I think it's honestly, I think it's proof in, the, in the, our, the condition of our roads compared to the chip seal you see out in the county. I'll be right honest with you. You drive out in the county, and the chip seal they do on their roads and their maintenance they do is a lot farther out in the years, and you can tell it. They they pop hole very bad. Um, but. My reasoning is, is that you know we have one of the biggest asphalt persons in the state in this town, and I've talked pretty extensively with him about this, and he assures me that we're wasting a lot of money doing this on this on this rotation. But that's a guy that's trying to sell us new asphalt. He's not in the business. <laughs> I mean, he's not in the business anymore. Anyway, I think that we need to make a motion on this. I'll make a motion to approve the purchase of the 43,000 gallons of RS 1B emulsion from oil, the oil from Ergon Asphalt Emulsion. I'll okay. second that. There's a motion and a second. All those in favor, please show a voting sign. Opposed? Uh, I guess discussion's done. There's a motion and a second. <clears throat> okay, move forward. Uh, Farm City Days. This is just um, the request Farm City Days needs a resolution in order to obtain their state license so that they're allowed to sell alcohol on city property during their concert series. Can we, uh, I'm perfectly fine with this. I know that in years past that we had been zero alcohol on city properties and then over the past three or four years, we've kind of accepted that. Um, maybe in the future we might want to look at kind of streamlining, streamlining this process and making it more of an administrative process. Um, we seem to be okay with it um, as a council um, since the first event uh, that happened out in the park. I don't think we voted no on a single one after that. Maybe we need to maybe come up with a policy if they check these boxes and put it on the consent agenda and move forward. The state requires a resolution. Every time. Okay. I mean, we That's why we do it. Yeah, we can. We can put it on the consent agenda. Okay. Just speed it up. Right. That's, I mean, that's if, right. if we want to do it, maybe on the consent agenda to move it forward. Okay. Uh, is there a motion here? I would make a motion in accordance with KSA 41-2645E, approved resolution 2019-15, allowing Farm City Days to sell alcohol for the special event concert on July 13th, 2019, from 6.30 p.m. to 12 a.m. within the designated area at Riverside Park. I'll second it. There is a motion and second. All those in favor, please show the voting sign. Opposed? Wes, hide your hands one up all night. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> motion, motion passes. Uh, looks like we're now in line for counselor and administrator reports. Uh, it's my turn to start, and I want to thank first off Congressman Watkins uh, for reaching out. He gave us a personal call, he gave me a personal call, and it was nice to hear some support and that people in D.C. know that A, we exist, and B, that we're having some problems. Um, they didn't materialize in the ways that we thought, but I do want to actually thank a lot of people, Sid, Corey, um, the staff and the administration here at the city. I think you all handled this excellently. Uh, you sent out emails, 
And I know that, like I said, I know that there are some frustrated people, but I'm not one to second guess the National Levy Service of the Corps of Engineers. I know some levees broke in different places that ease that off of us. And um, some of those storms didn't materialize and eased a lot of the pressure. Uh, I'd like to thank the county as well. I know that their emergency management team and was working really well with our emergency management team and you know, we didn't get the big bad 31 foot flood, but I think we got stress tested pretty well on how we were going to react. And I mean, I'd like to thank everyone out there that, that followed some due diligence and did fill up their water bottles and, and you know, took off some pressure. Um, you know, as we look forward, as we move forward, we're not out of the woods yet. Um, Tulsa's underwater, so to all my friends and family out there, be safe. Uh, Keystone is releasing record amounts and still backing up. So we are definitely not out of the woods. And I imagine once we get out of the woods, the emergency management team will kind of get together and talk about what went well and some changes that we can do in the future. But until then, everyone stay safe. Um, if you didn't know, the park's still closed. We stopped front should have told you. Don't go down there. It's underwater. Um, we're doing our best to get the pool and everything back up. But um, as you can see, we're not at the park tonight. So uh, it's closed for everyone. Other than that, um, remember to be safe out there. Ron? Where's our employee study at? Um, I haven't touched base with Wichita State in the last week or so. Um, I know they were taking all the data that they had gathered through the employee surveys, the on-site interviews, um, the group interviews, and kind of compiling all that. And that's something that I had looked to kind of reach out to them last week on, and I honestly just didn't get it done, so I'll try to have an update soon for council. Oh, no. I want to say, reiterate how great the city did, and I was asked by a couple people, would it be possible for the city to provide sand and bags, to fill your own sandbags for wherever you want to use them around your house? I know Burlington did it, and a couple of people asked me if they were, that was available here, and I said I didn't think so, but could it be made available? I'm just asking. I don't know how much we, we, we keep some sand on, on out there for padding on our gas lines, but I don't know how much we keep actually in stock. But good idea. We just have to get back. That's all I have to think. For the future. Yeah. yeah. Definitely something that we can look into. Okay. First, I'd like to congratulate um, Dr. <laughs> Jonathan Wells yeah. on passing that an accomplishment. So Thank congratulations. You. I know that's a lot of work. Um, and then I am just going to bring it up about mosquito spraying because now after all of this water, and we're going to have water sitting everywhere, and it's wet, 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 wet out, I do think that we really do need to reconsider mosquito spray and I'm doing everything I can in my own backyard including a bat house but it got blown over in the wind um, but I, I just think that it's really important because it's going to be so wet and so nasty and a breeding ground so I'm just gonna I know we touch bases I would like to get a hold of you on maybe some compromise plans in there um, I'm not a big fan of the spraying, I don't think it's effective, but I think there are some compromised plans that do involve some spraying, but involve what's really, I think, more important on there is the remediation work. Mm -hmm. The spray only works when they're in the air. We want to stop them when they're right. in and the water in the larvae. It's also just the education process of knowing things need dumped out if there's water, even if it's in a little pot. Dump it out. Get the water out of stuff. And maybe so, I was going to get with you this week, but again, we okay. talked. I'll get with you next week, and maybe we can maybe we can talk a little more. Okay. And that's it. Thank you. Does the city still have the equipment for spraying? Yeah. You still got it, right? So that expense has already been paid. It's a, it's the chemical itself and the effectiveness, and then I'm sure Nancy and I will get together and talk a bit, and, and maybe try to come up with a, a compromise plan here. So I just want to say. Uh, Took my walk Saturday and was down in the Southwest Park. I saw the street guys out with checking the barricades and adjusting them and everything. Glad to see them out there. They did a good job. Yeah, try to swing. Yeah. 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 Um, so I, I think something I kind of comment on this every once in a while. But I think something we need to be aware of, and I uh, 
to do such a good job of it myself just a few minutes ago, but just be aware of the decorum, you know, how we're communicating to each other up here. It's important that we try to maintain a level of calmness and but just I would like to apologize for cutting Ron off. I didn't realize we were You did? Yeah. I didn't know you did. <laughs> if, you're, if we're wanting to discuss the chip and seal planning and a, a study or something, I think we, we should probably approach that during the uh, budget. So sorry for stepping on your toes and moving on on that. But, um, I was wondering what kind of consideration we're giving to the recreation building now that we've <laughs> flooded three times in um, a year as far as yeah, maybe I was, reconsidering. I was going to try to touch on that a little yeah. bit. So I think we would be remiss if we don't take note of what's happening on a regular basis and we talked about that a little bit. Um, and I know the last couple of weeks have been pretty trying with all the rain. I just want to say to Sid and his staff, who I think have been unfairly attacked with communication, the communication with council was fantastic. I was waking up to two, three emails, get emails during the day. So great job, guys. I really appreciated that. And to the people that did get frustrated with, you know, the, the water levels that didn't quite get there, way better to be prepared for something that doesn't happen. And he's sitting there in the dark. That's all I got. Uh, I got a, about three things. First off, I'd like to thank the city and all their employees for everything that they've done over last week in the flood. And most importantly, all the volunteers that I've seen help them move out. JD's Automotive and another other businesses down there. Volunteers that stood up. That's terrific. Uh, Roots Festival, I snuck in there a couple weeks ago when they had the community building and everything looked like it went real good there. They didn't even know I was there and I talked to Mike Jewell last week and he says, you was there? I said, well, I sneak in. Well, you can't have and the second thing kind of goes back to your thing on the community building, Karen. I had an intriguing conversation the other morning with a couple gentlemen. And in a couple years, Jefferson Elementary will be vacated by the school district. And this gentleman says, well, you know, community building has flooded a number of times over the last few years. Why don't the city, and I think this is something we need to look into, why don't the city look into buying Jefferson Elementary probably give it to you. for a <laughs> recreation yeah. center as well as moving the city offices that are cramped to Jefferson where they have more space, that way the police department would have more space I think this is something vision down the road that either this council members or future council members need to look at. That's all I got, John. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you. Yeah, I heard some similar proposals today. Um, I just wanted to point out to the talking about flooding stuff. We did get a, our EMC dividend check. For 2019, and it was um, over $78,000, um, and uh, that average over the last five years is just under 70. So this was a better year than others. Um, trolley ride. Um, Donna wants to get everybody together. We kind of put it off because of the, the size of this meeting, and then, and especially with the weather. Um, but we'll probably try to do that uh, at the June 10th meeting um, if we can get that all organized. Uh, just kind of a overview of kind of the, the storm flood event. Um, you know, I think uh, just as a matter of reference, 2007 the crest was 26.9, uh, 1951 it was 33.26. Um, we got the notice, I think it was Tuesday afternoon, that it was going to be 31.7. And the thing that was so concerning about that was that 
by 7 a.m. the next morning, it was going to be 29 and a half feet. So it was already going to be over the 2007 flood. And so we really um, got things in gear and uh, tried to get notices out. Um, we, we were trying to get communication with National Weather Service to try to verify that. They kept saying that's it is what it is. Um, anyway, over that whole the whole course last week, there was I don't know how many conversations we had with National Weather Service, Army Corps of Engineers. We were talking to people with John Redmond, trying to get better information um, so that we could prepare people a little bit better. Um, ultimately, it ended up that. The recommendation after talking to the people at the Army Corps in Tulsa, they said, well, you probably, it looks like you need to have the, the river re-rated by USGS. And so they came out, I think it was Sunday, and, and took their measurements. And then that rating that they developed then is what gets put into the model. And I think you, if you looked at the predictions up until that point, they were always off. And they've been pretty close to being on since they got that, that new data. So. Um, that, but that took a lot of conversations, and um, believe me, that I think everybody at the, at the EOC was trying to advocate of, are you sure this is the number? We're not seeing that here, um, and trying to get the best information so that we could relay that to the public. Um, you know, we're still working on, we're going to be assessing the kind of the damage. Park level, the water is still high there. We actually had, um, we've been pumping water out. We actually took one of the fire trucks down there yesterday and tried to pump more water out just to get more volume. Um, I think it, we're not going to see it go down significantly until that river kind of goes back in its banks, and that's still a couple of days away. Um, I'm trying to think. We are we do have a kind of scheduled to kind of have a debriefing, but there's some things that we're probably going to be bringing back towards to council to, for things for us to consider. So next time. Uh, it helps um, things like having some video cameras monitoring the different, like uh, the Coon Creek Danage Basin, Elm Creek, so that we can kind of see that real time, what that's doing, um, having the river, and also having that maybe on the public side, so that maybe we can cut down on some of the traffic in those areas, <laughs> because, um, I mean, I, I will be honest, I was out there checking the river, but I feel like I, I needed to do that. But man, there was it was a traffic jam at times out there. So um, maybe if we have something like that, we also talked about doing some um, on the electric side some SCADA controlled uh, switching so that the guys don't have to wade through water with 20 foot hot sticks to do some switching. Um, so kind of the, some of those things of it was a like you said, luckily um, we didn't reach the levels that was expected, but it was a pretty good test. Of, of where we were and some of the things that we might need to do to improve. Can I ask a question about the water plant? Uh, it looks to me like they were going to <coughs> cut the water off at 27 feet. <coughs> it looks to me, uh, when you just look at it, the water plant looks fairly high above, way above that. Now, I'm asking from the position of ignorance. I don't understand why they were going to cut it off at 27. Well, well, about six feet above that, that is something, that's another one of the follow-up things that we want to do is, is get some, probably some surveying on the water plant, the road, uh, because part of the problem is, is it's not just the water plant, it's being able to get to the water plant in time to shut it off. Yeah. Um, we I know that in about 25 feet. Right now. Right now. You know, in, in 07, it, it got water at 26 and so we knew that we were going to, that 25 foot range was kind of our target, like, okay, if it gets there, we're really going to be monitoring what's going on. But we figured at that time, it's still probably already going to be across the road. Um, so we want to get some surveying done. And that's another question that came out of all these conversations is maybe our, we need to talk to the National Weather Service and adjust our, where they go from uh, moderate to major flooding we might want to adjust that level down to where it, it's our water plant. When we when it gets above that, we know that it's more critical flooding, and so that level gets changed, and that helps them as they're predicting. They can kind of see that and really refine what they're yeah. uh, hopefully refine <laughs> refine their prediction a little bit. I'm sure Walmart is happy. I think they sold all their water <laughs> based on the report. Everybody. Me and myself included, got buckets of water sitting around all over the place. Yes, they gave the hospital all their water. 
They had, they had pallets, pallets and pallets, pallets for us too if we needed it. Yeah. They were they very generous. There was actually some scuttlebutt out there that I forgot to mention. This was the third thing that I wanted to bring to bring up. That the we were trying to manipulate our water prices by threatening to shut the water pipe right down. <laughs> <laughs> it was so incomprehensible to me that I didn't even know what the, how they could be putting that together. But <laughs> that's not the truth, right? No. We weren't trying no. to drive. See what else you got for us. Um, and then I guess that's the, the thing with the rec building. I know that we were um, going to bring back some a consideration of a little different project. Um, we've kind of basically put that on the back burner to try to get at least get the water out of there before we assess um, what, what we would do. Um, I think we, I, I guess there's, I feel like there's a consensus of some of the conversations that we've had with, with Berkeley and, and his staff that we feel like we need to, we're going to do a little bit of investigation of some of the storm lines down at the park once we get the water out of them. Um, we're going to run the camera in them just to make sure that um, they're all in good shape. Um, I have talked to PEC who did the, that study years ago um, that I think it, they proposed like a $3 million project to, to take care of that. Knowing that that's probably not what we're going to do, but is, you know, is there a smaller type of project that might still alleviate some of the concerns that we have? There, so we're going to kind of look at those things, but I'm, I, mean, I think that's a question um, that, and this is, that, this is a community vision thing for, for council. Um, I think in 07 it was decided to rebuild down there, and and, and we did that. Um, we've kind of offered you know, the, the idea that okay, we need some place for the community to, to do those the things that we do in that building, um, being able to. Have, uh, have it open to walkers and then our rec programming um, and all that. But if, but if that idea is shifting within, within council, within the community, then um, that means that then our recommendation would be a little bit different as well. Now, now would be a good time to consider if there's a partnership available with the elementary school that's being constructed. I don't, I'm sure that would cost some extra money, but. I mean, now would be a time to consider that. I've heard that from like 20 people. Why don't you just go to Jefferson, move it to Jefferson? I was saying, that's what I've heard from people is why will we put more money into that and why are we going to redo that before when this keeps slow. happening? Yeah. You know, so so it is something to consider. Do Is there a better place to put that money? Paint, paint the floors with concrete paint and, you know, use it for... I mean, there's well, still events that can happen on the Well, conference. and that's basically what we're going to do with the epoxy, but we have right. talked about just going down there and maybe it's uh, kind of diamond grinding them down, holding them up and polishing yeah. them. Yeah. That's, yes. I think the diamond board that we've gotten, that you guys approved that's a while back, is still a viable option in the building, even though if we get a stream of water in it. But it doesn't sound like it's No, I, yeah. I, well, we've got the experts looking at yeah. the epoxy because I've got that same concern of. You know, because we saw some joint, not mm -hmm. necessarily water coming up, but we could see the moisture mm -hmm. in the before this. Before I don't think you'll ever dry. get that moisture no, out of that. No, never get it so. out of that. Dry. I mean, they, they tell you, and they put that thick stuff in, it will see it. So far, yeah. We'll, we'll bring that up and have that onto the, uh, add it onto a agenda item here soon then. Yeah, uh, maybe, maybe some vision planning there of an ideal world. Um, here's a couple other options and partnerships that we're about to talk to you about. So we're we'll able to have that discussion. When Sid mentioned the trolley, I'd like to know if you're interested because I don't want to get there and no one show up. Are you interested in riding the trolley? The reason I thought about it is you guys help. You pay the insurance and you do other things for me and the tourism. If you're not interested in riding it, then come when I charge you. If this is for free, <laughs> if, if you're interested in it, I'll get a driver. But I don't want to just come down on one person. <laughs> so that's my question. Okay. Yeah. We'll send that, give people time to kind of look at their calendars and, and yeah. get back with you then. And, and I can change to another day. I just, I first just sent a note 
since I don't remember the regulations at all. Yeah, I remember, but I had other things on my mind. And I stayed in Wichita all weekend. You want to talk flooding? It was flooding there. I don't know that it was much better there than it was here, was it? <laughs> it was bad. <laughs> See, you got anything else for us? That's, that's all. Gene, what do you got for us? Oh, um, no, wait, wait, we got one more. Um, reminder, Monday is your deadline for the mayor, Kim. You're gonna run again. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Not tipping her, dude. Chase, that's what we're gonna run. Wanted to throw that. You're running. Are, we, are you allowed to say mm -hmm. anybody's? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't have that information. It's all done at the county. I know the mayor has because he told me personally. It was in June. I'd like to make a motion that we adjourn this lovely meeting and gathering for the evening. Motion for the meeting, second, all those in favor, please show a voting sign. A vote, same sign. I did?